Right, um, I want to talk about uh, what I have uh, recently, well, what, what was the big takeaways for me from the um, ITV documentary and the BBC Panorama documentary. And uh, really the biggest thing for me was the, uh, the ITV documentary, which uh, started by focusing on the fact that there, was, there had been this uh, spike unexplained spike in deaths at the Countess of Chester for a certain period. And uh, the spike was never really explained in the ITV documentary, but t towards the end there was an explanation, and it, an implicit explanation, and it was this, uh, uh, th these words spoken by Nina Modi, and I'm going to read them. Uh, this was a neonatal unit that was being required to look after babies who should not have been cared for there. That's a rather uh, strong statement, uh, wouldn't you think? The babies that we are referring to were all extremely vulnerable. Some of them were demonstrably and recognisably on a knife edge. Others, okay, some, some you could see were on a knife edge. Others could have been recognised to have been on a knife edge, but they were not monitored appropriately and they were not treated appro appropriately. So, of course, you have a baby on a knife edge, but <laughs> you don't have enough nurses there, you don't have doc enough doctors there, and you don't have doctors who actually understand what those babies have got. And so problems went unrecognised until the point at which a baby deteriorated very abruptly so that the babies might not have died had their difficulties been addressed earlier. Okay, that's uh, Nina Modi, Professor of Neonatal Medicine at Imperial College London, past President of the Royal College of Paediatrics and Child Health. And uh, she seems to me to be a very highly qualified and very smart lady, and she uh, speaks very uh, clearly here. Now, what she doesn't do, because there's just no time in an ITV documentary of one hour with four quarter, hour, quarter of an hour segments, is actually talk about which babies would be the ones she was actually thinking of here. But uh, I, I could have told her, and if they'd asked me, I would have told them who I thought they were, and I would put the spotlight on the twins and the multiples. Now, here's a, a list. I hope you can see that too. Uh, we, there are recognisable twins like A and B, E and F, L and M, O and P, who are actually part of a triplet, the third one is sometimes called R. But there are also slightly less visible twins because J was a survivor of a twin pregnancy. And so was N. And so was Q. So there are three more uh, twins which have died uh, in utero and probably actually deliberately um, uh, aborted in order to give the other twin a better chance of survival. Now, for instance, we know concerning OP and R <coughs> that the mother had been told that been offered the possibility of having baby R aborted to improve the chances of O and P, but she turned that down and went ahead. Now, those babies should not have been there at the Countess of Chester. And the reason is they, those babies, particularly those babies, had known um, complications, I mean, known in advance, which uh, actually required them to have been born, to have been delivered and cared for right from the start elsewhere. And in fact, and now here I'm looking at... Uh, uh, a web page, lucyletby.org, a post which uh, I, is actually largely been written by Dula Sarah Hawkins, who is a um, real expert on, on uh, twin pregnancies and who knows just everything there is to know about the particular complications of particular kinds of twin and multiple pregnancies. Um, some of the babies we have discussed so altogether there are seven twins and multiples from four pregnancies. Some of them uh, 
well, uh, actually had been booked at Liverpool Women's. The mothers who had been cared for by obstetricians, gynaecologists or whatever at Liverpool Women's Hospital, which is a UK centre in the care of twins and multiples. And um, uh, it has a level three uh, neonatal intensive care unit. And that is where a large number of the babies in the indictment should have been born. Now, we actually know that uh, a, a, a doctor uh, at Liverpool Women's was actually working closely with, with uh, Stephen Beery at the Countess of Chester. And he should have uh, warned Stephen Beery what, uh, what uh, Beery was getting. That, that guy is called Bill Yoxall. So, some of the babies were booked at Liverpool Women's. Two are reported to have had TTTS, with one losing co-twin and the other likely did. What is TTTS? That's twin-to-twin -twin transfusion syndrome, when you have identical twins sharing a placenta and typically sharing one, a sort of, you know, the bag where the baby containing the amniotic fluid, where the baby uh, uh, grows in during the pregnancy, uh, TTTS babies need to be born and delivered, <laughs> need to be born, sorry, need to be born at a hospital with level three facilities and there needs to be one team of nurses and doctors there for each of the two or in the triplet case three babies which are typically born by caesarean section uh, and in, in order to give them a chance of, of survival. Now, uh, <laughs> there's lots of medical stuff which I'm not an expert in, and you can find it on lucyletby.org, and you can Google and do your own research and find out about TTTS, and also another thing called TAPS, and uh, you will see that the babies which Nina Modi is very di diplomatically referring to where very many of them actually were during pregnancy. Their mothers were being cared for at Liverpool Women's and they should have been born there. And they might have had a chance of survival there. The ones that died might have had a chance of survival and would have certainly had a better chance of survival at a level three unit, especially one specializing in, in, in complicated twin pregnancies and multiples. That, that triplet birth is like a one in a million pregnancies uh, thing. It's, it's so rare and it needs needed specialist delivery and specialist care from the moment the babies were delivered and it didn't get that. And Liverpool Women's was actually collaborating with Countess of Chester because Breary and Yoxall were talking to one another and what else do we know? Well, we know that Liverpool Women's was having capacity problems. <laughs> Actually, they even had had some infections on their maternity unit uh, or intensive care unit. They'd reduced the number of cots. They didn't have enough staff. And so they, they were not operating at full capacity. At the same time, maternity units in North Wales were being closed <laughs> for, for possibly similar reasons. And there was quite simply an influx of difficult, difficult cases coming from North Wales and uh, uh, ending up at the Countess of Chester, which should, who should never, ever have been there. And had, <coughs> had they been there, <coughs> they might have had some, they would have had a much better chance of survival. Of course, uh, m many of them perhaps were, were, were doomed from the start, but the, the, the suboptimal care of the Countess of Chester certainly did not, did not help. Uh, this means that the problems at the Countess of Chester were actually not, a problem, not problems uniquely of the Countess of Chester, but the problems of the whole network of hospitals in, in that region. And they must have been known to the uh, senior clinicians at all those hospitals and um, uh, uh, we know from from um, 
we, we know from Thurble that uh, uh, Bill Yoxall at Liverpool Women's had lots of contacts with Stephen Beery and helped him uh, in the in the various analyses which were done at the Countess of Chester and later with the police uh, also helped with the uh, uh, going through the like the 4,000 babies which Lucy Letby had cared for previously at Liverpool Women's. So the Countess of Chester disaster is not just a Countess of Chester disaster, it's a disaster in which important senior doctors, consultants at the neighbouring hospitals were also involved and were also co-responsible for. And this could be one of the reasons why it is taking so long to get sorted out, because when it gets sorted out, uh, there are going to be a lot of more people who are, uh, are going to be uh, in some kind of tr trouble. And I'm not saying that they were doing bad things deliberately. I, everybody was just uh, sort of muddling on and doing their best. And a, a, a perfect storm, a perfect storm took place. Uh, suspicions of a serial killer blew up out of all proportion and were a very co convenient way to explain the shitstorm they were all in together. Huh. Um, yeah, that brings me briefly to the, uh, uh, to the uh, Panorama documentary where we had again those, those uh, percentages, uh, the, the Liverpool Women's Investigation done by Yoxall, uh, in which a 1% extubation rate was compared with a 40% extubation rate when Lucy Letby was on duty. And the thing is, you have to know rates of what, what per what. And extubations, number of extubations, say, per day on a maternity on an on a intensive care unit is not the same thing as number of extubations per baby per day on a neonatal unit. And it looks as though that the whole 1%, 40% difference is very largely due to, very easily explained by this simple distinction. If, 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 if one baby, if each baby is having one extubation, per 100 days, but you have 40 babies in the neonatal unit all the time, you're going to have quite often have extubations on the neonatal unit, and you're going to quite often have extubations while a particular nurse is present. It's, it's just absolutely ridiculous. It shows that these numbers are misinterpreted by, by amateurs, and that uh, Frankly speaking, uh, 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 poor Judith and Jonathan, Judith Moritz and Jonathan Coffey, are amateurs out of their depth, not talking to the right experts and not doing the necessary work to, to figure out what, the, the diff what those two shocking numbers mean. And it, 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 this is not a damning indictment of Lucy Letby. No, it's a damning indictment of the BBC Panorama team in my opinion. Okay, I will now stop the recording, uh, for which I have to press some buttons somewhere, but I can't find it. There it is.